Hello and welcome to this short presentation on the Nubu Sarai, the International Center for Advanced Studies of RIVAC Systems and the Distributed Pan-European Research Infrastructure. Our main mission is to facilitate and contribute to excellent science for the sustainable management, use and protection of RIVAC systems at a time of unprecedented environmental change. The lead and coordinator, Adrian Stanika, will provide a short introduction of the RI. Danube SRI is going to be a distributed pan-European research infrastructure that will facilitate interdisciplinary research in river sea systems. That's one of the key things with Danubis, it brings together people with a variety of disciplines. So I'm primarily a, a, an ocean scientist who looks at open oceans and coastal waters, whereas I have colleagues who are more interested in upstream rivers or might be interested in deltas or estuaries. It's about bringing together scientists from different backgrounds to work together to understand the connections between freshwater and the marine part also with a focus on transitional environments, deltas, estuaries and lagoons. Andrew Tyler, co-lead of the Observation Node, introduces the need for the Nubius RI and the development of the infrastructure. The current monitoring of river sea systems is currently undertaken largely to assess compliance against various regulatory and statutory requirements. The way the data is collected, however, isn't that useful to understand the processes which govern these very dynamic environments. So there is a need to develop a systematic framework which enables us to understand how these environments are changing and responding to environmental change, the impact that that's having on the ecosystem services that these environments are providing to us, and also enable us to forecast various management scenarios or indeed a climate change scenarios and impacts that they might have going into the future. To address these scientific challenges, Danubius has brought together 12 super sites across Europe. These super sites represent uh, catchments and uh, estuaries and deltas as well as coastal environments which are both of scientific value but also of national strategic value for each of the countries involved. These are supported by four science nodes across the whole of the infrastructure. The first is the observation node, which provides uh, both spatial and temporal data derived from satellite data as well as in situ observations. The second is the analysis node, which provides both more sophisticated analysis of, for example, emerging pollutants, as well as providing the standards and a common framework in which to ensure sampling and measurements are undertaken systematically across the whole of the infrastructure. We then have the modeling node, which provides modeling capability to fill the gaps that we have in the observations, but also, and critically, to model uh, scenarios from climate change scenarios to management scenarios into the future. The impact node then also helps that articulation of that science to, to be of, of societal value, to ensure that the infrastructure both stimulates uh, sustainable economic growth, as well as is of much wider societal value and of course protects the environment. The whole of Danubia Sarai is supported and coordinated by a hub which is sited in Marigul in the Danube Delta, the site from which the whole of this infrastructure was actually envisaged right from the start. The exploitation of satellite and in situ based earth observation technologies provides a robust approach to delivering data to show how these dynamic environments are responding to pressures of change. Here is Steve Groom, also the co-lead of the Observation Node, to explain. Yeah, well, the Observation Node is one of uh, four nodes in uh, Danubius. It uh, includes providing data on in situ measurements, measurements taken uh, in water or uh, in river sea systems, but also taking satellite data, particularly from the new European Copernicus series of satellites. 
It also has a role though to um, provide some kind of coordination between the different observations taken within the super sites and other entities within uh, Danubius. So the aim is to provide consistency in observations, to have certain standards, uh, protocols to follow, uh, but also to get involved in the training aspect so that uh, any scientist wanting to use some of the observation equipment can be trained in use of that equipment, appropriate uh, analysis of uh, the results that come from it. Water tends to be a dark target of reflectance and so a high quality atmospheric correction is needed to reliably retrieve in water constituents such as chlorophyll A, suspended sediment and color dissolved organic matter. We use both sun tracking radiometers and handheld devices to measure atmospheric aerosol thickness to support algorithm development for atmospheric corrections. Here are Peter Hunter and Vigelis Pirakos to describe how we predict in-water constituents retrieval from satellite data. My role in Danubius is largely uh, attached to the observation node, so as part of the project I'll be helping uh, to develop the, the methods for measuring the water quality of lakes and rivers and, and estuaries and, and coastal areas uh, using observations that we, uh, we glean from satellites in orbit above the Earth. And here we are today on Loch uh, T to get some uh, measurements of uh, reflectance of how much uh, light does the water reflect in order to validate some of the satellite uh, uh, data. So at the front of the boat we have uh, three spectroradiometers that they measure the quantity and the quality of the photons that they are coming uh, from the sun through the atmosphere, the photons that are reflected by the water uh, surface. So this is basically measurements of how light is absorbed and scattered by different particles within uh, the water column. And with this understanding, what we're able to do is then develop models uh, that we can use to analyse and process our satellite data to then retrieve uh, information on, on the water quality of, of water bodies like this and indeed uh, rivers and, and coastal areas as well. So here we are in the lab where we brought the water samples as soon as we were out of the water uh, at uh, Loch T. So here uh, we collect, uh, we have collected samples to uh, analyze several uh, parameters of the water. This is, uh, we're referring to bio-optical parameters, some chemical parameters, but generally uh, water quality uh, indicators. We've been doing the same analysis, the same sampling at different parts of the world and we collect all this data together to develop some algorithms that they are globally uh, applicable. So we can take the algorithms that we develop here and apply to different river uh, syst systems across the globe. Danubius has the very real advantage of the fact that it will transcend many research projects which enables us to deliver and develop a longer and lasting relationship with a whole range of stakeholders. It's only by working in partnership with both industry and policy, for example, that we can really then start to tackle the issues around climate change and deliver the solutions which are of genuine value to society. Currently, the work is supported in several European projects. Horizon 2020 Cherto, Monocle, Coastops, and CCI lakes. These projects are developing multi-scale observation networks of sensors, improved algorithms to address the lack of harmonization in water quality data from each service and extend Copernicus to the large number of stakeholders operating in river sea systems. Adrian summarizes the development of the legal status of Danubius Arai. At the end of these 10 years, we see that the idea matured enough to be legally recognized at the global level. The success of Danubius RI will be full in the moment when good science will be produced, developed for the better. It's a sign that we leave something behind and I think that's extremely important for all of us.